So we're doing something new today, and you know the most important thing about anything new we try to do with the content on the channel is viewer feedback. So please, if you are watching this and you enjoy it, hit the like button for me and tell me what you enjoyed in the comment section below. If you watched this and you thought it was bad, dislike the video and tell me in the comment section what you didn't like so I can know how to improve it. But I'm always trying to make my content as good as it can be. And with this idea I had for the full set of views, I'm like, yo, this sounds like a, a freaking fantastic idea. So we're putting it into action. Yo, what's up guys, PK Sparks here, and welcome to my full set review, my very late full set review of Raging Tempest for Yu-Gi-Oh! Now, you're watching this in the middle of me uploading a whole bunch of Zelda Breath of the Wild stuff, I understand. If you are watching this right now, thank you, I truly appreciate it. If you're all playing with your own Nintendo Switch, I hope you guys are enjoying it. And what, well, I guess if you're enjoying your Nintendo Switch, you're not quite watching this video, are you? Unless the Nintendo Switch is a browser and you can actually watch it. I don't know, I don't think they ever... Listen, we'll, we'll talk about the Switch another day. Probably right now. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to be talking, I'm going to show you guys um, the top five reasons why you need to buy Raging Tempest. This set, I think, is really underrated, and I mean, for, it's more than just the Zodiacs. I understand the Zodiacs are coming out, and they are a phenomenal archetype that has just been introduced into the game, which is soon to get body by Link Summoning. But still, I, I understand that, but there are so many other reasons in this set that you guys need to grab the set for, and I'm going to talk about them right now. Quick reminder that I can't talk about every card because it's a 100 card set. There are plenty of cards that you need to grab for yourself whether they're common, whether they're rare, or whether they're super rare. So make sure you check out the card set list. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below so you guys can check that out. But anyway, so we have two cards that can work in many decks. They're both secret rare, but they can have, they're just good. One is, one is Foolish Burial Goods, which is a card that when you activate it, instead of sending a monster to the graveyard from your deck, you send a spell or trap card from your deck to the graveyard. So that opens up a lot of plays, such as if you want a card in the graveyard that you want to just banish immediately, so that way you can get another effect. Or, in this case of the Crystrons, you guys know I'm talking about the Crystrons a lot lately, match duels, deck profiles, all that and more. You can send Crystron Impact or Crystron Entry to the graveyard, and then, well, Actually, you know what? Never mind. You can't use either of them because they can't be used in a turn that they're sent to the graveyard. But still, you know what I mean. You can set yourself up for them plays. You can send any spell trap card that may activate when it's sent to the graveyard. You can just pop it. There are plenty of cards like that. So Foolish Burial Goods is a card that for many decks, you may want to consider. If you want to get the graveyard activation for any spell trap card, if it works from just by being sent to the graveyard, not from the field to the graveyard, but just being sent to the graveyard, that's a card you may want to put into your deck. And another secret rare card is that grass looks greener. Now, on, on hindsight, you're probably like, it's such a bad card, you're killing your deck. But think about it. I have seen Light Sworn decks rock out with um, with this card. I have seen, uh, what was it? Not Cosmo. It was like Inferno. It was, it was some deck. I can't remember the name. But the way the deck worked was that you banish cards from the graveyard to special summon other monsters from your graveyard. So they would have a 60 card deck and they would activate that grass is greener. They would drop, like depending on, let's say you went first and I went first and I, I thinned my deck from, four, it's a 40 card deck and I thinned it to 30 by the time I ended my first turn. So then I had to count, one, two, three, four, five, I had 30 cards. They dropped from a 60 card deck, they dropped like th uh, 25, 20 cards to the graveyard. And from there, it's just banishing and banishing. Now, it can be stopped. As a matter of fact, if I was using my Dark Magician deck and I got Kaiku on the field, that kind of shuts that entire deck down because you can't banish cards from the graveyard while Kaiku's on the field. But still, that grass look greener. Um, it's a really nice card where if you just want your cards in the graveyard and you want to play with a Thunder deck, but you can also benefit from cards being in the graveyard, you might want to consider that. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, Yo, maybe this would actually be really good in a Christron deck. No, nah, there's not enough Christron monsters to make that work. But still, it's, it's a nice idea. Number four goes to the Christron support. Christron, Quarion, Gandrax, and Sofefner. I promise you, this is no bias. This is no bias. But if you are building a Christron deck, 
these cards are going to improve it so much. They only work for Crystrons. Like, you have to have Crystron monsters or anything. Well, then again, for Crystron Gandrax, you don't really need it. But, I mean, the way it works, I mean, you could summon it without Crystron monsters. But, I mean, it's, it's kind of meant for it. But you can summon it without it. But still, Crystron Crystron Gandrax is amazing where when you summon it, you can banish um, monsters on the field from your opponent's side of the field equal to the number of materials that were used to summon that monster. And then when it's destroyed, you can target any monsters that's banished and special summon them to your side of the field. So it's a really nice card, 3,000 attack and 3,000 defense that gives the Crystron archetype a lot of power, a lot of versatility, a lot of utility, and a lot of just trickery a lot of I, i've played a lot of people where when i've summoned query on gandras they're just like well dang like you know i ain't got break um i don't, I don't have breakthrough skills so i can't do nothing but banish what you want and then from there it's, you kind of rock out um christian so fefner a lot of christian deck profiles after raging tempest have this in their deck and everyone agrees this card opens up so many combos you can drop Christron monsters into the graveyard to summon Sol Fefner, and then you can destroy any face, any card you control, whether it's face down or whether it's face up. You can destroy it, including Sol Fefner. And when Sol Fefner is destroyed, you can target, you can special summon any Christron monster from your deck, including a second Christron Sol Fefner. Now, with those card, with those effects, you can only use them um, once each per turn. But, uh, I forgot to mention that, so Fefner, you can even special summon from the graveyard. So if you have another Christian card in your hand, you can discard that to special summon so Fefner from the graveyard, and then destroy any face-up card you have in the field, including so Fefner, so you can search your deck for another Christian monster, summon whichever one you want, whether it's a non-tuner or a tuner Christian monster, and go into the plays that you want. I'm telling you, so Fefner opens up plays. If you have a Christian deck, these cards are what you want, you need to improve your deck tenfold, I will, maybe five, fourfold, fourfold, but seriously, they, they, they just do so much work. The third reason y'all need to get this set is for these three cards, Wind Witch, Ice Bell, Glass Bell, and Snow Bell. Now these cards, when you use their effects, you can only ex um, summon wind monsters from your extra deck, whether they're level five or higher, or whether they have to be wind or whatnot. But the way that these cards work, literally, hear me out, Wind Witch with Ice Bell. If you control no monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand, and then special summon one Wind Witch monster from your graveyard. If you use that effect, I'm sorry, from your deck, and if you use that effect, you can only special summon, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except uh, a level 5 or higher Wind Monster. So there you go. And then you can special summon Glass Bell, and when Glass Bell is normal or special summoned, you can add one uh, Wind Witch monster from your deck to your hand, which will be Snow Bell. And then, if you control two Wind... How's it work? If you control two or more Wind Monsters and no non-Wind Monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. A single, a Wind Sequel monster that was summoned with this card as a single material cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Now, if you were to get this combo out and you summon a Wind Synchro Monster, um, whether it's level 5, whether it's number 4, or whether, whether it's level 8, um, it cannot be destroyed by battle. And guess what? Um, well, actually, no, they can't be level 8. Yo, no. I was about to say, you could actually make Christian Aquarian Gandrax, but you're one level off with this one. But still, um, Glass Bell is a tuner, Snow Bell is a tuner, Ice Bell isn't a tuner, but it's level 3. So you can make level 7 or level 4 plays with just these two alone. Or you can even go out to something bigger, make your own plays or whatnot. Because there's a lot, of, a lot of not only wind support, but spellcaster support. I mean, they're all spellcasters and winds as well. And the fusion monsters and the synchro monsters you get, I believe it's a synchro monster, from... Raging Tempest for the Wind Witches are pretty nifty as well. So it's a really great way to get a lot of monsters on the field really quickly. It's a great way to get some, just thin your deck out um, very quickly. I'm telling you, these three cards, they cycle through each other. And if you can get a play set of each, and you can just knock them out literally. Ice Bell leads into Glass Bell, which leads into Snow Bell. It's free. It is free. All you gotta do is not control any monsters, so it's a nice way to either start off a duel or whatnot, and then from there, like, the plays you can do are not infinite, but many, so look into them. 
Now, we have a common in this mix-up, but the number two reason I think you guys need to get Raging Tempest is for the Ancient Gear support. There's a good amount of them in here. A lot of them are really good, especially Hunting Howl, which allows you to fusion summon without actually needing polymerization. Although, Raging Tempest also comes with Fusion Recycling Plant, so you can get that as well. And then, bam, you got even more. So, just, just try it out. Try it out. But anyway, um, Ancient Gear Howitzer and Chaos Ancient Gear Giant. These two are freaking monstrous, let me tell you why. First of all, Ancient Gear Howitzer you can summon with any two Ancient Gear monsters. Any two. And Ancient Gear, uh, Chaos Ancient Gear Giant you can summon with any four Ancient Gear monsters. Now, because it is a dark type, you can use Overload Fusion. Yeah, remember that old school card, Overload Fusion? You can bring that back and use it to summon this thing because it is a machine type as well. And just rock out from your graveyard or the field so overload fusion is a great little tool for chaos chaos ancient gear giant um uh, ancient gear howitzer is very nice because it only has 1800 defense but um actually up uh, it's unaffected by your card effect by, by card effects all of them so no right get you none of that during your main phase you can inflict 1000 damage to your opponent it's a free 1000 you literally just say all right well take a thousand Oh, well, shoot. So then he was like, okay, well, they could, if they can do this for free every turn during the main phase, I should probably want to get rid of it. But the thing is, uh, you can only use, use this effect of Ancient Gear Howitzer once a turn. But if this card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one Ancient Gear monster from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. Do you know what that means? That's instantly Ancient Gear Golem. Instantly, yes, he cannot be special summoned, but how much to let you summon anything and knowing the summoning conditions? So it's instantly 3,000 attack, 3,000 defense with piercing, and when it attacks, your opponent cannot activate any spell trap cards during a battle. Oh, yeah, when it attacks. So, literally, it's so free. I want, I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, I am building an ancient gear deck. And I am going to do an Ancient Gear profile. Because with these new cards, I think the archetype just might be very fun. Especially with some old cards like Scrap Recycler. Which, by the way, is starting to go up even more in price. So, if you haven't grabbed yours yet, you better go on TCG Player. Or you better go on Trolling Total. Wherever you can buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards from and try to find it. I got like 10 at 99 cent. And I went back to Trolling Total to try and buy more. And they upped to the 350. I see you realizing it's becoming the thing now, aren't you? You realizing. I got mine y'all better get y'all's but anyway going into the chaos engine gear giant oh my i can't like these fusion materials monsters they are just getting wild 4500 attack 3000 defense is a freaking blue eyes ultimate or neo blue eyes ultimate but anyway must be fusion summon and cannot be special summoned by other ways unaffected by spell and trap effects unaffected any, including your own, including your own, so be wary of that, but it's unaffected by spell and trap effects. Just sit there, like, you're trying to Dark Hole, trying to Regeki, oh, no, can't do it, trying to get over, now you can still monster effect, you can still, like, Blue Eyes alternate it, you know, and all that, but, I mean, shoot, if I want to, you, I can, you can try and activate your ability, then I'll just say Imperion, get, get body, you know, <laughs> but then again, if you try to attack my Imperion, what am I going to do, just summon two pieces in this place, but, man, let me just summon. Yo, I should put some rank 8 plays in my magnet deck because of that reason. Anyway, I'll get to that another time. But Chaos Integrated Giants' as, um, other effect is, uh, was your opponent's monsters cannot activate their effects during the battle phase. Which means that if you deal with anything where it's like, you know, it cannot be destroyed by, was it, I'm sorry, if it bows his monster, return it back to the hand, nah, none of that. So, during the battle phase, it's unaffected by everything. It can only be beaten over. No monster effects at all. If they do it during the main phase, fine. If they cannot use any effects during the battle phase with this card. This card can attack all monsters your opponent controls once each. Now think about it. Take a second. Swords Concealing Light, you flip everything face down. And then you can attack everything once each with no effects being able to come through to hurt you. None at all. You can't even break through skill this because it's unaffected by all spell and trap cards. Um, it was peri not periodically, like all the time. I forget the word, word I'm looking for, but like all the time, it's unaffected. You can't, you can't stop it. You cannot stop it. Now listen, it can attack all monsters, and after you flip them face down, if this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage to your opponent. 
in case you guys don't know what piercing is um if your attack is higher than your opponent's defense and you destroy that monster then it's similar to damage calculation if a monster would be in attack mode so if you attack a 3000 defense position monster you take 1500 points of damage it's free and so you can still get some like wipe them out just their entire field with just 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 this one card and the only way to beat it is by beating it over you have to get more than 4,500 attack points on the field in order to beat Chaos Anti Gear Giant. It takes four monsters to summon, but come on, man. In the Anti Gear deck, that'll be free. It's wild. The, if y'all aren't getting this, um, getting this set for Anti Gears and rebuilding your Anti Gear decks, you're doing it wrong. The number one reason you need to buy Raging Tempest is for Zodiacs. I mentioned them earlier and I understand how great they are. I went to the Raging Tempest sneak peek and the store had a tournament. And in that tournament, my very first duel was against a completed Zodiac deck. First of all, the amount of money this man had to have spent for this deck is ridiculous because I'm telling you, Broad Bull is 30, Dryden is 30, and Barrage is 85 and freaking climbing because of how good this card is. It's ridiculous how, how expensive that is. So if you can buy a box for like $60, $75, excuse me, and you end up getting Barrage, yo, you're getting your money back for one freaking card. It's stupid. It's stupid. The Zodiac deck works on its own. At the same time, because of its uh, attribute and typing, Beast Warrior Earth attribute, there is a ton of support for this deck out there. You can like one of the most popular ones is the Fire Formation um, Tanky, which when you activate, you can search the deck for any Beast Warrior monster. It's it's wild. Like I want y'all to know, I don't know if I'll be able to do a full deck profile because my deck is right here. I am working on it. Out. I have Zodiac Combo, Fire Formation Tanky. I have Bunny Blast. I have Ram Ram. I have three Rat Tears. I have three Whip Tails, Thorough Blades, Boar Bulls, Tiger Moor. But the thing is, these cards are hard to come by. If y'all saw my double box opening of Raging Tempest, then you already know that I pulled one board board one dried it on my own. But that card, Barrage, it's so good and so necessary and so expensive for that reason. It's similar to Dark Magical Circle for the Dark Magician deck. The thing is though, Dark Magicians aren't that popular or new. So, people aren't really running after it. However, Dark Magical Circle essentially makes the new Dark Magician deck, and you know, it, that price has not dropped. It's been $30 ever since its release, unfortunately for me. <laughs> By the way, I'm working on a Dark Magician deck girl deck profile. But anyway, um, if you are not trying to try out the Zodiacs, you're doing it wrong. This is the number one reason why you need to buy this set. The Zodiacs are freaking wild. If you want a deck that you're going to see everywhere, if you want a deck that can work with many other cards, if I've seen Metal of Metal Fold build, I've seen uh, a Kaiju build with the Zodiacs. The Zodiacs are not only splashable, but if you wanted to make a pure Zodiac deck, you could do it. You could absolutely do it. It's insane how good this deck is. You have everything you need with just this set, this archetype. Yet you can destroy back row and front row, you can inflict damage, you can prevent abilities and effects. This, <laughs> you can do everything with the Zodiacs. I'm telling you, if you're not trying to get the Zodiacs from Raging Tempest, you're doing it wrong. So those are my thoughts, those are the top five reasons why you need to buy Raging Tempest. I don't think I said it in the beginning, but thank you to my friends at Konami for sending me the entire set for me to look over and present the cards for you guys. If you guys haven't done so yet, make sure you buy Raging Tempest. That's not me just plugging, I mean it's a great set. Like, I, I bought two boxes of my own before I even got the set. This set from Konami, you know, I, I wanted it. I wanted it. You need to grab yourself some as well. But, if, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And tell me what your top five cards from the set are if you've already grabbed yourself some Raging Tempest. I will see you guys next time. We have match duels going live this weekend. We ha Well, actually, just match duels. I, I decided to upload this extra and not dueling links because I, I wanted to get this uploaded. I should have done it a while ago, but I kind of forgot because I was in a slump. So, you know, that sucks. <laughs> but anyways, up now, I hope you guys do enjoy. I will try to do Fusion Enforcers for you guys as soon as 
as soon as possible. But until then, check out all the other content, including the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild playthrough and live streams that I'll be doing on Sundays, probably on Sundays. Maybe, I don't know what I'll just check out the channel and make sure you stay subscribed so you guys can know when I'm doing that. But for now, it's time for me to dip. Say hot, guys, and I'll see y'all next time.